Pounders, welcome back. We officially have 14 drafts left until our big board mission is complete. We're waiting on one person for this room to fill. Shout out to Ben. He's going to be throwing together some of our exposures along with some of the other uh, Pounders guests that we've had on the show. That'll be Three spot. Let's go. Farachi here at four. J dubs in the seven spot. I think that might be it. Honestly, only two pounders in this room is a W. I'll take that. That's a win. This is officially 84% full. It's starting to pick up on the back end right now. It's starting to pick up. Wow. Yeah, this is three spots nice. Three spots nice. Let me see what my chase exposure is at. Chase, Hill. I know I'm under on Hill, but that's okay. We'll, we'll take those chances. Let's see. I do want to go through and sort of see where all my first round exposures are at the end of this contest as well. I know we're going to be heavy on Garrett Wilson because we were drafting him Sometimes over Puka. We're, we're at like 7% Puka. Garrett Wilson's one of my more heavy players, especially with Bijan too. Bijan, we were pulling up four before he really got spiked by the crowd. So this is this is interesting. The Bijan. And typically, I am a little more wide receiver heavy, especially in the first round. Jamar Chase goes one overall. What a gift. What a gift. <laughs> Let's go. And it's going to be CMC maybe at three. Shout out to Adam. It says slap the like. I appreciate you, dude. Everyone coming here early. Dave, what's up, my man? Ben's in the house. Bobert. Got two in you tonight. Depends. <laughs> it depends <laughs> how much trouble I want to get into. <laughs> Tyreek goes off at four. I'll take Lamb at three. Let me see what I've caught up. And you guys know if you were following me early in the big board, I start off so behind with my one and two spots. Oh my God. Am I a spoon? 12% CD Lamb. 11% in the big board. 12% uh, amongst all contests. But, uh, this might bring us up to 12%, which is, that's nutty. Because I think my Christian McCaffrey is also above Christian McCaffrey. I'm at 11% Christian McCaffrey too. What a heater on the back end. But doesn't come without sacrifice. 3% Hill. And my Chase is at 8%. Bijan, I know I'm heavier on. Bijan's at 11%. Wow. It's funny, the first edition of the draft guide, Nick criticized me for it. And of course, like, how do you know it's going to happen? And then the draft landscape made me change the draft guide for the second edition. But for the first edition of the draft guide that came out at 6% fill rate, we had both Nico Collins and DJ Moore ranked in the red. That's when they were going around pick 13 to 15, both of them. And then we switched DJ Moore to yellow just based off the draft landscape of wanting to get at least one wide receiver through two rounds. And I was going a little heavier on CMC, Bijan, and Brees. So it did make sense, especially Bijan and Brees. Uh, Bijan used to get at seven pretty religiously, seven, eight, even nine. So getting DJ Moore there, it sort of made sense for the build, but it never... It never felt right. And of course, who who knew Diggs was not Diggs, so Keenan Allen was gonna head to Chicago. So it's definitely interesting. And then Nico, the thought on Nico was free agency or the draft could have hurt him. And where Tank Dell's price was always like 15 plus picks later, especially it was even more to start the contest. It was and that was in the draft guide the whole time. Like, give me Tank Dell at the 
at his price point, just less risk, better value. And then is Nico even like the true number one over Tank Dell when they're pulling relatively similar targets when they're both on the field? Marvin Harrison gets pulled to the 10 spot with the Iuke. Interesting. Trying to get a little different here. I don't know if I, I don't know if I love it though. I don't know if I love it. Brian Ayuk at 15. We'll see how the 10 spot team comes out. If you guys snuck in this draft with me, let me know where you're drafting from. Damn. Joe Barrow at 92 is fuh lames. Yeah, I'm glad. So we've been pacing ourselves with this draft, and I did have to take sort of like a two-week hiatus um, just to sort of slow down drafting a little bit so I could get back to fill rate. And now I'm happy. You're getting rice in the 40s. Like You're making different combos that the early drafters could not. And let's see if we get HN here. I'm cool with either one of these. So we did update the CSV rankings in the Discord. If you guys are interested in those, also comes with the draft guide that's updated every 20, 25, 25% uh, fill rate in the contest. That is going to be the next update is coming this weekend. So, oh, Farachi on auto? No. All right. We'll bring in H in here at 22. But uh, I don't have the rankings on right now. You have to do a service to the people that that pay and support. So I had to turn them off. But I have them in my head and behind the screen. <laughs> that helps. But yeah, Josh Allen obviously takes a hit, losing digs. Are they more apt to draft a receiver in the first two rounds? Probably, but still, Josh Allen's going to take a small hit there. Um, even though like Diggs was what like wide receiver, I saw a stat. He was like wide receiver 27 over the course of like the last six to eight weeks, something like that. For me, Devo 27 is fine. Maybe bring Waddle up to the situation with A-Chan. I think that could be interesting too. Let's do that. Live a little bit. Live a little bit. Waddle, A-Chan, and Lamb. It's not going to be that unique based off of ADPs, but we'll get some correlation borrelation in this house. J-Dubs in the seventh spot. Al, what's going on, my man? Josh in the house? Pat and Co? We're doing... I might need to get a little midstream, a little midstream 12 ounce. Might have to run upstairs real quick. See what's in the fridge. Wow. Had Stroud go 10th overall on the big board. The biggest board. Oh my God. It's going to get even crazier at the start of BBM. Right after the NFL combine, people start to get more in tune with what's going on in the fantasy football world. People start checking in on the underdog and they start jumping into drafts and some of those rooms, man, it's like the wild, wild west. It's like the wild, wild west. But if you just join us, go down, slap the like on a live stream. We're going to be doing a YouTube membership giveaway at 35 likes tonight. And it's going to go to a subscriber in the live chat. So make sure you hit the sub. CJ Stratt at 29. 29. First QB off the board. I hate it. I hate it. Uh, I'm not. I put Stroud in the CSV above Mahomes. I'm not putting him above Lamar. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. Josh Allen at 33. Yeah, please. Please. That's cool. That's cool. The dude gets there on the ground. Like, yeah, give me some Josh Allen at 33. Especially where they didn't really add to their running back room in free agency. So James Cook only rushed in two touchdowns last year. We know the draft isn't necessarily strong at running back. So Josh Allen seems pretty locked right now for the goal line role again. It'd be interesting to see like 
I'd love for Khalil Herbert to end up in, in like Buffalo or Dallas. I feel like they'd be able to get more value for him right now where the draft is a little weaker at running back this year. So we'll see if they do something there in, in Chicky Chicky Ago. Ridley at 34, this team's just going and get in his guys. This team hates wide receivers. What else is going on in this room? J Dub start with Brees Hall, Barkley, and Mike Evans. I like that start. A little double RB. Tough to pull off, but uh I like what he's doing here. Three wide receivers straight here. Three straight here. I like Farachi's start. Hill, Devontae Adams, and Devonta Smith. That seems strong. Yeah, this team hates wide receivers. We called it. He goes Kelsey at 38. <laughs> okay. Okay. You do that. You do that, my friend. I uh, wouldn't mind Lamar. Although, are they going to play Miami again week 17? So if we're going for that week 17 correlation, I don't care. I would love to get Lamar here and uh, at pick 46 if he's there. He's my second highest owned QB right now for exposures, I believe. Oh my God. And Drew is back to posting pickums in the disc. You guys aren't in the Discord. He's our horse. He's our horse that pays for odds jam. The fantasy, it's like an optimizer. It just tells you what are the best picks based on what sports book you're betting at. Derek Henry off the board. Cooper Cup. Tank Dell at 39, falling to some more realistic spots. Let's see. Nico Collins went at 19. Where'd Diggs go? Diggs went at 20. I I have them falling a little further than that. But same with DJ Moore. Dude, give me some Rashi at 42, man. Give me some Rashi at 42, please, J Dubs. This is sick. This is sick. Starts double RB. And it's so cool to get a combo like that to then get Rashi, who could be a value. There's no guarantee he gets punished. Faraj, man. I'm happy with one of these two. Not going to lie. I'm happy with one of these two. What's tough about having Farachi here is he can go Tua in one of these two spots before us. Well, in this spot, pick 93. Yeah, he goes ETN. I would have liked ETN there. But you can't complain. We wanted Lamar, pick 46. We bring him in. I think we could also go Trey McBride here. And that could be interesting. People probably want the Zay Flowers click. I think Zay Flowers belongs at like the bottom of this tier. Now maybe we correlate it. Probably have it like this. I'd have to double check, but pickings off. We get him three picks after ADP. We have Lamar. Let's just do it. Let's just do it. Fun start. So far, CD Lamb, Devon A. Chan, Jalen Waddle, Lamar Jackson, Zay Flowers. We're having fun. We're off to the races. See how many likes you guys are at. 10 likes, 25 likes away from giving away free YouTube membership to a live viewer. Farachi taking down every pick. Someone's got to at this man. Someone's got to at this man in the Discord. -er. <laughs> Must be multi multi drafting or multitasking. Pits at 53. Okay. This dude's building. This dude's building his squad. I like, I don't hate the players really, but I, I do think Diggs has to fall. <laughs> Could see a lot more three wide receiver sets in Houston this year. Hey, Rich goes at 54, right before the Pittman squad. J 
J-Dubs being faced with Keenan Allen, Cooper, Mahomes. He has Rice. He goes Keenan Allen. I don't know if that was an auto pick. But that got dropped down to zeros too. That went down to triple zeros. Andrews over McBride. Depends if he stays healthy. McBride's just like the younger Andrews. I also think Baltimore has to add to this this wide receiver group. Like they're not going into the year with with Zay Flowers, Bateman, Andrews, and likely like they're gonna add to this group. And free agency is basically all done. So is it a trade? Is it the draft? And I think it's gonna be the draft. So we'll see. Could be both. Five wide receivers straight for the 10 spot. <laughs> Wild. Wild. Charles in the house. Yeah. I agree. I agree. But even if they bring in like Marvin Harrison Jr., right? Like you're still liking you're you're still liking Trey McBride there. And that's not going to really hurt his value too much in my opinion. He's still going to have probably 23% plus of the target share of that offense still on a team that probably is going to throw the ball more than than Baltimore. I think that's the problem I have with with Lamar and Andrews. I don't think Andrews is bad at his price, but I think he is more risky than McBride. Plus, it just feels good to where we go in early running back. It feels good to get that third receiver there instead of going Andrews for our current build. Mahomes still on the board. If he comes back to us at 70, I was gonna say, like, we'll go, we'll go Mahomes and Marquise is already off the board. Where did he he went at 62? Mahomes goes at 65. One pick before J dubs. Oh my god. Must be absolutely punching the air. Must be absolutely punching the air. A 13 pick drop. Just needed one more. This guy pairs him with Pacheco, which is fine. Walker off the board. Uh, I will say we need to get. There's a, probably two receivers in this range. One RB, two RBs that I really like. So probably going to go one and one here. Montgomery off the board. Am I the only one that thinks David Montgomery is too, too expensive? Especially in tournament play. Like maybe in cash games, he's fine. Where you don't care about, you know, the last three weeks as much. Like every week is just as important in a cash game because it's a cumulative scoring the whole time. But in a playoff format, where you think Gibbs is going to have more of the work, Towards the end of the season, I feel like uh, I feel like seventy two is he's just going in front of a couple guys that I like. So I think it's Godwin here. We'll bring in Godwin here, and then we're gonna go one of these RBs, which automatically turns this build into a three tight end build. I have it like this, but this is close. Yeah. We're just going to bring in James Conner here. It's between Conner. It's between these three. But let's go. Let's go James Conner. Let's get another running back, especially with A-Chan. Barachi insta-clicks Bowers. Yeah, Barachi's got a nice little balance. 2-4-1. We got a 1-2-4. So similar. 
similar but different. Rashi's got his three workhorse running backs. It'll be interesting to see where he drafts his next one, where he draws the line. We're up in 16 picks. Next pick's going to be pick 94 and 99. Skipping ahead to that range. Can we correlate? We could reach up for Tua, or we can get Tua at 99. If The problem is if we push him to 118, Farachi can basically cut us off, and he would if Tua did fall. Especially he has zero QBs. So it's just something to keep an eye out. Love off the board with the A-Rich team. This team's got Jefferson and Nico. So this one's going to be strapped for receivers, the sixth spot. He's going to be hurting. The 11 spots catching up at receiver. He brings in Reed and Marquise Brown as his first two. <laughs> kind of hard to look at. We'll see uh, because this range is not <laughs> where you want to have to be drafting wide receivers. <laughs> I think that's where experience goes a long way in these draft rooms and sort of knowing the landscape and how to work around it and from different draft positions too. It's it's different depending where you are. Yeah, he had to go see what here. I think it's it's probably a blessing that he was still on the board for him. An absolute blessing. I don't think Dak is still going to be there. Not planning on it, but if he is, this would be this would be sick. It would be a, this would allow us to stop at two QBs as well. This is the dream right here. This is the dream. And the fact that no one went Fergie here, Fergie Dak, raises the chances that it comes back to us. Kyler's off the board. I'm probably still, even if Dak goes, I'm probably still bringing in one of these tight ends. So uh, he gets AD. So he is catching up at receiver. He is catching up at receiver. Has a long way to go, but if even one of those guys is off the board, he's just, he's still buried. Purdy off the board. Correlate those teams, babies. Correlate those squads. We can bring Mike Williams up to this range. Obviously, Stevenson, Harris. Who else do we like? This is what we're looking at right here. This is what we're looking at. This is the pool to pull from. Oh my God. Don't go with third QB, man. There's no way. There's no way this is the guy that kills us. I'm going Jake Ferguson, like no matter what, if Dak is off the board. That's a threat. Oh, man, he's going to auto him. Please do not. Please do not. Oh, my God, he goes Gus Edwards in 91. <laughs> Breeze. Dude, you need a receiver, man. Farage. Oh, my God. Let's go. Let's go. Fall in the basket at 94. At 94. Now give us Fergie Ferg. Oh. How to build a monster. I'm going to retitle this video. Only if we get Fergie. If not, I'm probably... I don't like Myers for this, for this team. Oh, my God. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. A little six-pick drop on Ferg. A little 16-pick drop on Dak. Correlated. We're happy. We're happy. We're extremely happy. We have Schultz falling a few picks after Diggs goes to Houston. Not a whole lot because of this range. It's just, you know, it's kind of dog. We have Lad up in our rankings too. And if I mention Lad, I think the contract goes. I have to mention Adam. 
<laughs> yeah, that fell to us. Yeah, dude, this is hilarious. Gus the bus in the eighth round. Barf. <laughs> dude, it's rough. It is. That is rough. Especially, I mean, people are getting him at where, like, pick one, one eighty-five to start the year. What's his ceiling? That's the problem I have. Like, what is his ceiling? Especially if they bring in another running back, you're overpaying for him as it is at his current ADP. I think we expect them to bring in another running back. So, he'll be a great floor guy, though. He'll be a great floor guy. Probably end up with 10 tutties. But you're looking at like 13 point weeks. The ceiling game for him is two touchdowns on the ground. On a team that might be playing from behind. It might be kind of gross in, in LA for the Chargers. So We'll see. All right, we're done with QB, which this saves a roster spot on the back end, which is honestly my favorite. Either being able to save a roster spot from having two good QBs or two tight ends, maybe like Ingram Ferguson. Especially in a 20 round draft, like I think Ingram Ferguson's fine to stop at. Just getting that extra roster position at running back or receiver for one of those dart throws is it feels good. Singletary off the board at 109. Trey Benson goes off at 106. So we still have to sort of... We can go RB wide receiver again. I think that's going to be the best option. Downs is still on the board. Okay. I might actually be okay with Khalil Shakir now. After Diggs leaves Buffalo, we still assume they're going to bring someone else in. But after he falls to 125 from the Curse Samuel news, kind of like my ADP now. I'm starting to mix him in. <laughs> Bry H team's not dead. That's good. That's good. That's a good review from Bry. It's a good review from Bry. Adam says I'm clicking more Locket lately. J Dubs brings him in. I like what J Dubs has done here at receiver, tight end, running back. So clearly, dude, this team's got a one five, one two. <laughs> uh okay, if he drafted another running back, that it would have been this would be interesting what Farachi does. He goes Spears. I want one of these two. We could even double tap, to be honest. I'm tempted to go the rookie because you could get a Dallas landing spot. Not saying it's going to happen. You could get a Baltimore landing spot. Don't think those are good, good necessarily good fits for him, but it would probably take him falling. We can double tap receiver here, or we can bring in Chuba in this spot. Jalen Wright as well, I think, could be mentioned here. Brooks, I like to have as, I don't know, my RB4, if I'm going to be mixing him in. It just doesn't really happen a lot, but we have two QBs here. Yeah, I honestly like going either way here. We'll go with Chuba Chubes. Who was there for tight end? Got it was there. I'd rather get the third RB in this spot, especially RB starts to fall off a little bit. Some of the guys we like now at the end of this contest are much more expensive than they were to start the year. I think that's where the biggest change has been made, where it's tougher, it's easier to fall behind at running back than it was early in the draft season. Early in the draft season, it was very easy to fall behind at QB because of the recency bias of teams just having 
three drafted QBs and none of them healthy. You saw teams, multiple teams drafting four QBs uh, when the big board started. That has calmed down like, like it should have. <laughs> You've never probably gotten to that point. The recency bias is real, though. And it's fun. Like when you drop from 20 round drafts to 18 round drafts too, it completely changes the amount of draft capital you're spending at each position. Changes entirely. You're not going to be going three QBs with, with Josh Allen or probably even one of these top five, six guys, seven guys. I have to figure out where my two QB combo like Tua and Justin Herbert. Would you be comfortable with just those two? Trevor Lawrence and Justin Herbert in an 18-round draft. Got to find out where that uh, that final two is. And I guess it's going to depend where these rookies land too. Fields has settled in at 167. That's sort of where I put him. Like right when the news dropped, I think I said it to Adam. And Adam told me one of the bigger sites had him in like the 18th round. I was like, I don't know. The upside's still there, especially if you're doing like a zero QB type build. Maybe you have like your first QB is Kirk, your next QB is Rogers, whatever correlation you have with these middle round QBs. And then you go with an upside guy like Fields and you just hope he plays <laughs> week 17 or, you know, the last couple of playoff weeks. Basically, that's what the, the hope is there. There's no saying who's going to be the starter. Like, I bet they both play this year. It's just who's going to be playing at the end of the season is just impossible. It's impossible to find. No. But if you guys are just joining us, go down, slap the like on the live stream. We are 19 likes away from giving away a free YouTube membership to someone in the comments. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Fire Muth off the board at 134. What is happening with this guy? 60 picks before ADP. What is this man doing? 30 picks on Ridley. This team's going to look like butt at the end. But, no pun intended, three rookie RBs with Swift. It's not like, it's not completely dead though. It's not. Like what if what if you get like Audric Estimate to Buffalo? Could happen. It's just the fact that he went Estimate ahead of Jalen Wright is just mind blowing. Give us Jalen Wright here, Farage, my man. <laughs> it's cool if we don't. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We feel good about this. We feel good about this. Now we can bring in a wide receiver here. And man, Quentin Johnson's a tough click. 10 picks after ADP. We could probably muscle it. Roman Wilson. Is there a chance we get Roman Wilson at 166? No, probably not. Definitely not. It's only a 10 pick drop for a rookie. Could. All right. Ford's off the board, which means we are definitely going a receiver here. Could reach up for Mayor, too. What's the range we're picking in? 166, 171. 166, 171. Let's have a scroll. Let's have a little scroll here, fellas. Let's see what we're looking at. So we can go tight end in that range. We can double click tight end if we want and be done with our three if we get two of those guys, which we could do. Algiers there. Oh, okay, so Mayor's off the board. I don't mind that reach up. We're going to grab one of these two guys. We're going to grab one of these two. Let's check the Johnson exposure. 
just in case it comes to it. It's it's low, dude. <laughs> it's it's real low. It's very low. Okay, he's off the board. I guess we're just doing a full fade on Quentin Johnson in the uh, <laughs> in the big board. Actually, among all drafts, I'm 160 drafts deep. I've taken him once. It's probably an auto pick. They got to break the receivers, man. They have to. They have to. But I am a little, I'm a little worried. Like after they get rid of Keen Allen, this is a good range for him. Right by Dotson. If Dotson especially is off the board, I don't, I don't think it's like a no contest. Like I think Quinn Johnson's a good pick in this range. At 137, is there anyone that we. Yeah, this, this range is so gross for receiver. Like Jerry Judy, Rashid Shaheed, Brandon Cooks. Who kind of came into form at the end of the season as the second favorite target for Dak? But it, it was lackluster for most of the year. It was lackluster. Let's see how these guys, anyone doing anything weird? No, pretty normal builds, except for there's that one guy with two receivers. <laughs> Is this team this team is just reaching and getting his guys, and none of them are receivers. None of them are receivers. Okay, so <laughs> automatically, this becomes an 11-person contest, which we like. That guy just paid for the rake. We appreciate him. Every room needs that guy or girl. It could be a girl, too. The Mims clicks tough. The Mims clicks tough, I will say. Even it's it's tough to just even add him to my queue. Like it doesn't even look good in the queue. Er seven, welcome to the live stream, my dude. Ken Coleman is a baller, and all people sleeping will know once it's too late. Depending on landing spot, I think he's a little more landing spot dependent because he's not a separator. So he's going to need a QB that is not afraid to throw the ball into tight windows. That being said, he's a monster, right? I think he. He's a beast. Like he's big dude. Burke says, I like tight end in this range. QJ stinks. I'll never take him. Max sauce in the house. Gotta catch up on the chat every now and then. All right. Did the tight ends fly off? Nope. So we can. Pick 166 and 171. There goes Luke. If we miss this range, which we have to get one of these three, in my opinion. We have to get one of these three. Roman Wilson off the board. Of course, J-Dubs. Of course. Man's got the guide. He knows what's up. Yeah, it's tough. Tight end gets... Like, you can bring in a rookie down here. As your third, Bant, Jacecki. Do you think the recency bias of Irv Smith just going to Cincy and doing absolutely nothing is hurting Jacecki? Because I do. And if there's even a 5% chance T. Higgins gets traded, I mean, Jacecki should be above Okonkwo. He should be above Conklin. That's at the very least. I'd put him right next to Janu. Algier off the board. I like the Algier click. <laughs> All right, we're well, we going to get Kendra 12 picks after. We are. So we're going RB. I'm cool with skipping wide receiver in this range. We're going to go Kendra here. And then we're bringing in one of these tight ends. Likely's tough, man. Like I want, I think everyone wants Baltimore to run two tight end, more two tight end sets. Like Likely was more skilled than Odell. He looked better than Odell last year. He was better than Odell. Now, are they going to do it if Andrews is healthy, or is he going to go right back to playing thirty percent of snaps or less? And that's sort of the worry, and I think that's why. With likely, you're putting him in three tight end builds. You typically 
probably want your first tight end to be at least Jake Ferguson or earlier. I think it's fine to do with Jake Fergie Ferg. Yeah, like leaves the play with Lamar, especially because we're going three tight ends. Yeah, I like this too. That's a good shout. Ben, why we only have 25 likes and then 50 watching? The numbers don't add up. Big numbers, guy. Big numbers, guy. Doing a giveaway at 35 likes as well. So you guys have five rounds left. Five rounds left. Free YouTube membership giveaway to a subscriber in the live stream, in the chat. Jay Fields off, Corley off, big yards after catch guy. Competition at his school is the real major red flag. Steve Smith likes some if that means anything. It's bringing likely here. It's bringing likely here. I mean, this team's team's balance. For the listeners, we'll go over it. Lamar Jackson, Dak Prescott, Devon A. Chan, James Conner, Chuba Hubs, Jalen Wright, Kendra Miller, that receiver, C.D. Lamb, Jalen Waddle, Zay Flowers, Chris Godwin, Lab McConkey, Jahan disappeared last season, Dotson. Tight end Jake Ferguson, and I say likely we need to bring in a third here. We need probably one more running back. Like this room's, especially if we're counting on, if we're drafting like we're right and we get a good landing spot on Jalen Wright, drafting like you're right. <laughs> you only need to bring in one more running back, which means we can splurge at receiver and we don't even need a splurge. We're going to have a luxury pick. That's what that means. Our last pick's going to be a luxury pick. We're spending it anywhere but QB. Kate on off the board at 175. Wandale slips to 173. Roshan off the board at 176. Oh, my God. ER7, dude. <laughs> Good luck, my man. Good luck. Changing diapers. That's the life. New dad. Hashtag new dad. ER to goat. I love that. Whoa! We changed him. We flipped him. We flipped him. <laughs> I don't know how we did it. We flipped Adam. That's crazy. I'd prefer you guys not to draft him. I'd rather me just draft him and then be wrong. Funny the Ray Davis steam early. He got steamed early up to like 170, maybe even like a 160. Some people are definitely reaching for him in the 160s. But he touched 170, 172. I know that for a fact. Now he's sliding again. The hype sort of simmered, simmered down. We took our first share of Zeke in a biggest board. And this was after... Most free agency happenings took place, and it's like, wow, like Zeke could end up back in Dallas when Dallas had not made a move yet. So if that happens, I mean, he's going to rise. He's going to rise. He'll be a good value for where he's at right now. Let's put it that way. But it's funny, different, different time, different time points in, in throughout the summer and throughout the year. You're drafting differently. You're thinking differently. You're adding, subtracting to the equations of these teams what they're doing. Like Noah Brown, he was, <laughs> he was a good click. He was a bad click. He was a good click, and now he's a bad click again. They bring in digs. Like you're looking at like the fifth favorite target on Houston. Probably rather just take a shot on a rookie landing in a good spot. Or like Tyler Boyd landing in a good spot, free agent. This dude 
has a 3732 build, which this is helping us. In my opinion, this dude's stealing this amount of running backs. He's obviously overweight at running back. He overspent. We did not overspend. I think we actually got some pretty good values in here, especially Wright and Kendra after ADP. One more RB. I'm not going Bateman. I will not go Bateman. I'm not drafting Bateman. There's no way. <sighs> Tyler Boyd feels bad. Sort of feels like a floor play. But we got it running back. Ray Davis, Zeke. Zeke also a floor play, but let's let's bring in Zeke first. I'm sort of hoping someone drafts Tyler Boyd. We're done at RB. We bring in Zeke with Dak. Make a bet on the offense. We're done at RB. We need a tight end. We need probably three receivers. And this team is sizzling. This team is sizzling. Nine likes away from the giveaway. You guys can hit it. You guys have hit it every single time. Go down, slap the like, log into your YouTube account, hit subscribe so you can slap the like the next time you join us live, and then jump in the draft with us. That's the process. That is the process. I've been going Javon Baker here. Or should we add Devonta Walker? We should mix in some Devontae Walker here, probably. We don't need we don't need Boyd, especially like we have Godwin, Waddle, Lamb. Like we have good floor. Let's let's take a shot on a rookie here. Let's take a shot on a rookie. Two more receivers, one tight end. Where'd Janu go? Janu went at one eighty three. Leak Washington off the board. And then we have to cover Farachi, J Dubs. Both Pounders teams after this draft. Rondell Moore off the board at 197. This is nice. This is nice. See if anyone picks our sleeper pick. Okay. Ray Davis finally off the board at 200. JJ McCarthy off the board at 199. Who's he pair him with? Curious, curious. Vegas, Jacoby Myers. Might just be an advanced rate click too. Has Herbert, has Deshaun. I just... I would say you need a third QB with that grouping. But Vegas. Maybe just go Gardner Minshew, though, with Myers, in my opinion. Jackie Dobbins off the board. Jermaine Burton. I didn't see this. 181. I was wondering where he was in the queue. Go and get your guys. See my highest owned receiver right now? He's my highest owned receiver. It used to be Darnell Mooney. Last round Mooney. And we were getting hated on. We were getting hated on. Not by all. But by few. Now they're clicking Mooney in the 160s. Sickos. Look at this run at receiver here. Tyler Boyd. Goes to the Mahomes team. I like that. I like that. It's kind of hoping. That's cool. That's cool. Getting a run at receiver. Javon Baker's off the board. Other than that, like get this, get this group off. I'm cool with that. I'm cool with that. We're not really 
too heavy on any of those guys. Three, four, eight, two. You'd think this would be a running back. He brings in his third tight end, which is fine. I don't think it's necessarily an overspend. You can stop it too, but I don't think it really hurts. Wow. Juwan Jennings. This dude's the recency bias of the playoffs, maybe. <laughs> Noah Fant at 214. It's tough to say no. It is tough to say no to that. It's tough to say no. We're just going to do it. I don't even like it. I don't even really like it, but uh, yeah, I'm typically not really bringing in too much Fant unless I have Gino. I had a lot of Fant early, just hoping as a free agent he'd get a good landing spot on a tight end needy team like Cincy. Ends up re-signing in Seattle. They bring Lockett back, JSN second year, DK. He's automatically the fourth favorite target. Not ideal. The backup tight ends, however, leaving could help. Yeah, you have a Noah Brown slide, which I think is correct. We're going to bring in McMillan here and say thank you. Thank you for falling to us. I don't love the tight end group. I'm almost tempted to bring in a fourth tight end. <laughs> Adam's still not clicking Burton. Hollins, 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 Hollins. Can't get there a Stroud over Mahomes. It's strictly, it's strictly just based off of weapons surrounding him. I don't think it's that hard to pass up Mahomes. Grant, welcome to the live stream, man. The sweet baby Ray. <laughs> Sounds like a, a scene from Tell Dig at Nights. <laughs> Mike, I'm just seeing this. <laughs> oh, shit. It made sense for my team. I think I had a couple of rookies and I needed like a guy that could get me six to 10 points. But then if he does land in, in Dallas, uh, he would really, really make that team. Uh, he'd, he'd fit well on that squad. Noah Brown finally off the board at 222. What do you guys think? Receiver or tight end? Because I think we could stick with this group of receivers. CD Lamb, Jalen Waddle, Zay Flowers, Chris Godwin, Lab McConkie, Jahan Dotson, Devontae Walker and Jalen McMillan. I think we could stop here, especially like we have a good amount of floor. It wouldn't hurt to get one more receiver and then make the bet that what they play likely more. Noah Fant actually earns targets, earns playing time, I should say. Let me pull up the snap count. Seattle. And this is why we did not have any Noah Fant last year because of the same returning tight ends in Parkinson and Disley. And you're seeing this gross split between all three tight ends. And it was the same thing the year before and people still drafted him. Like they just didn't pay attention to it. I don't, I don't know what it was, but they just refused to believe it. And then you even saw Disley get hurt in 2022. Then you had Parkinson playing more snaps than fan. So this year, I can make the exception because of moving parts. He was a free agent. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Yeah. Wow, the crowd wants tight end. The crowd wants tight end. I'm surprised. I'm surprised. No way. Dude, I love the story on this dude. I love the story on Gibson. The first game was a punt return for a touchdown. They win the game after Rodgers gets hurt. It's 
that's cool. Like I'm a Pats fan and I, I can root for that. And from hard knocks, like Gibson, Gibson's a G. Gibson's a real one. If we were going to go receiver, it would probably look something like we can add this in Mac Hollins. Dude, Mac Hollins has to rise. Mac Hollins has to rise, even if it's just temporary. Even if it's just temporary. Okay, that's it for receivers. Tight ends, I'm staring at one. I'm absolutely gunning for one of these guys. All these guys have three tight ends. This team has two. Kyle Pitts and Ingram, he should be done. So we should be able to get our pick at tight end. People wanted Ertz or Knox. Ertz is off the board. Knox is... J-Dubs brings in Mac Collins right after we talk about him. What a, what a unit. Getting juiced on the live stream here. <laughs> See how many likes away we are from the from the giveaway. Seven likes away. You guys are gonna save me four bucks. You guys are gonna save me four bucks. We have a few picks left to get to 35 for the giveaway. You free YouTube membership to someone in the, the comments. Yeah. For me, it's it's one of these three. Ferguson, Likely, and Fant. I do think we benefit more from a tight end if we are if we're drafting like we're right. I guess you could lean on our tight ends. You could lean on the receivers too. But our draft capital at receiver, I would say, is much... Oh, I should click it because I think I have my limit set to three. So if I didn't click that, it was probably just going to auto-parry. And I honestly... I wouldn't care that much. I, I think you can go either way here with receiver or tight end. But if we're making a bet that Ladd gets a good landing spot or McMillan, or maybe Washington just rolls out and Dotson actually can prove that he's a number two, QB upgrade perhaps, you could see where uh, you could definitely stop with that group. This is probably my third or fourth team out of the 160. That is a four tight end team. I don't do it often, but I think it it makes sense in this spot. Especially a player that's not drafted every single draft. I, I think that's, if you also take that into consideration, I, I like that part of it too. Farachi drafting next to us, draft neighbors. Pick four. He gets Tua at 100. Aaron Rodgers, Gardner Minshew. ETN, he gets a nice slide on ETN. ETN in the 40s just feels really, really good. Cook, I'm not touching him in the 40s, but when he drops to 50, like I'm mixing him in. Tajay 117, Gibson, Keaton Mitchell, Israel Abanaconda. I like the RB group. Should have enough. Israel Abanaconda, it'll be interesting to see if he gets a change of pace type role this year you know six seven touches a game last year was really just the breeze hall show Tyree kill Devonte adams Devonta smith brian thomas jr mike williams kilo shakur Kent coleman malik washington i like this group i like this group i like the rookies i like the way he incorporated it with you know he's, he's got his correlation to Minshew, tua rogers the fun draft bowers conklin and sanders it'd be funny if both of these He's clearly drafting Bowers as if he's not going to the Jets. Uh, I like this group of tight ends as well. He gets a 15-pick slide on Sanders. So it's like his starting ADP, basically. Nice draft from Faraj. Always. Farachi's always strong. Farachi's always strong. Let's give this the last refresh here. 30. Damn. J-Dubs. Justin Herbert, Deshaun Watson, and J.J. McCarthy. I think this is just an advanced rate click. Just adding... Couple more points to this QB room. Brees Hall, Barkley, Walker, and Herbert. Interesting. Stops at four. Yeah, you can. I would do this more in an 18 round draft. I don't think it really hurts to add a fifth, but uh, we'll see. We'll see how the balance looks on the squad. Mike Evans, Rushy Rice at 42. Keenan Allen, Jacoby Myers, Lockett, Palmer, Romeo, uh, Roman Wilson. Like this group is already really nice. 
I think you can shed one of these receivers. For me, it's probably Elijah Moore, especially if you know you're going to get Matt Collins in the back end. Um, I think you can shed the Elijah Moore pick, and that should be a running back. Kittle and Najoku and Kate Otten, I like the tight end group as well. 13 pick slide on Kate Otten. Got good correlation. Palmer, wide receiver one in, in LA right now. Wild. Wild. Yeah, that was uh that was a good draft by the Pounders. Pounders always, always strong. JR, welcome to the live stream, man. Six eight tight end machine this year. Par him. Yeah. Mr. Uh <laughs> Mr. Two catches, six yards, and two touchdowns. <laughs> That's that's par him. I don't see him as like I don't see him as a guy to get you down the field and he's more of a red zone threat. More of a red zone threat. We have to end it here. I'm getting I'm getting the messages from the wifey. I'm going to do another we're going to do some more double streams, triple streams, especially when we get into BBM, more puppies available, more drafts available. But if you guys enjoyed tonight's live stream, go down, slap the like before you leave. Leave a comment if you have time. And I appreciate everyone coming out. Hope you have a good night. Ponders.